Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Tani Ping, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist. Okay, so today our topic is again a topic that was uh, requested by one of you and uh, I feel that this is a very interesting topic because it affects quite a lot of women and of course um, having headache and uh, migraines during every menses it not just, it's not just about the pain but also about um, difficulty in concentrating in whatever things that you need to do like uh, uh, studies, uh, work and your day-to-day -day life. So yes, headaches is not something easy to endure. Migraines can be worse. I still remember I used to have migraines as a child as well and I used to knock my head to the wall whenever I have migraines. Uh, I had that for, for many, many years, although mine was not related to um, my menses, but it is something I know how, what it was like and how it felt, but um, it just went away as I grew up. Somewhere, you know, when I'm in my 20s, my migraine just went away and never came back any, anymore. So I guess I'm one of those lucky ones, but I know that it's not easy to endure headaches and migraines, especially if it's during period. So now the, 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 this, today's topic is very, very uh, specific. That is menses and headache or menses and migraine. First of all, we need to know what is headache, what is migraine. Headache is a very general term. Any pain over your head, any part of your head, then we call that a headache. But migraine, it is very specific to usually we describe as half the head only, it's only one side. And it, use, it is usually, um, um, we could say, throbbing like, like there is a pulse. So it is a different type of headache. Then we have a, then we can also have things like tension headache. Tension headache usually it, it feels like as though there is something like a band that goes around your head that tightly, you know, like something tie your whole head tightly. That is like tension, the head under tension. So that is tension headache. Not all women when they have headaches during uh, menses is always, not all the time it's the, uh, definitely migraine, but it can be migraine. It can be a full blown uh, it can be a full-blown migraine. Migraine are usually worse or just a tension headache. Or sometimes they have headaches over one side, but it may not necessarily be migraine if it is still more of muscle cramp or muscle tenseness type of pain, then it is still can be some form of uh, tension headache. So headache can be exterior, usually tension headache is it's usually uh, muscles around the head but it also can be something from within like migraine migraine usually is from within something within the head usually involving the blood vessels of the of inside your head so the, the pain can be from inside or outside and some people when they have this headache and migraines they may have other associated symptoms they can also feel very tired feel very sleepy they can also have menstrual cramp at the same time or they can even go up to the extent of being very emotional and very hard to control their temper so every you can have collective of symptoms during this whole entire uh, menses and that is why we have this uh, premenstrual disorder which also includes headache and migraine okay so and you not necessarily have it on the day of your menses anything before menses on the menses after menses is still all related to this uh, entire um, uh, menstrual related headaches but most people will get it either the day before or the first one two days of menses that is more common but you can also get it after your menses so whenever something that comes together with menses we know one thing we well, you know one thing is hormone related. It's hormone related. So we know one thing is hormone related. And this hormone related thing, uh, it doesn't just happen during uh, menses or pre-menses or post-menses. We also see the same thing with women going through menopause. Uh, again, when women go through menopause, you again see a lot of women having headache, migraines, mood disturbance, cannot sleep, a lot of all this we call um, symptoms that are not really 
physical per se. So it is very much related to to uh, your hormone and why hormone cause all this problem. So you see, women we have this menstrual cycle, menstrual cycle. They say sometimes some people say, uh, why are uh, men usually more, you know, um, in general, I wouldn't say all men, but um, most men are usually more calm. You see, whatever happens, they can stay cool, chill, calm. Women, uh, it all depends on which time of the month, you know. So if it's uh, during a certain time of the month, you can still cool and chill, but certain time of the month, like before menses or during menses, that is when you are likely to explode. And it will happen again uh, before you menopause. That's why a lot of time women around this uh, menopause state, a lot of times you see a lot of the children enduring their mothers because their mothers like very unreasonable, angry so easily. Um, all these things are something that happens. We say we blame it on the hormones. Uh, yes, we blame it on the hormone because it is the hormones in a way contributing to it. It is in a way, but it is not solely the hormone. Because if you're going to blame it 100% on the hormone, then why is not each and every woman having headache or migraine during menses or before menses? Why not everyone? Why not? Why only certain people and not everyone? So when you really go into causes of headaches and migraines, although we can point a physical cause for it, Tension headache, we always say it's due to muscle spasm. The muscle contracts spasm, so it's very tight around the head. It is due to the muscle spasm. But my question to you is why your muscle must spasm? Okay, migraine, it is due to the blood vessels that go also the same into spasm. But my question to you is why your blood vessel must spasm? must actually contract and shrink and hurt you so much. Why? I mean, we know the physical thing that is happening to you. And we know as a result, we know how to solve the problem. We know what medication to give you. Also, if it's due to muscle, I give something that works on the muscle to relax the muscle. If it's something to do with the blood vessel, like in migraine, then I give you medication that works on the blood vessel. That's why usually we give some form of beta blocker. So we work on the blood vessel for migraine. But the question now is, why? Why does it happen? I mean, we know it happened because something, something went into spasm. Either it's the blood vessel or the muscle. But now the question is, why does it happen to you and not everyone else? We blame it on hormones because we see the pattern is with menses. But why? This hormone only cause you problem and not cause someone else's problem. Why you get uh, migraines and headaches during menses and no one else gets it? Why only some of you get it and not everyone else? Everyone else have menstrual cycles. Everyone else have all these hormone changes every month. So we point it out on the hormone change because you, know, you must understand we have rise in certain hormones certain time, come down certain hormones certain time. So our hormones go up and down, up and down. So when at a certain moment when our hormone is both at its lowest, that is around the menses and just before the menses, that is when all our hormones are at the lowest and that is when we have all this problem. And same when you go through menopause, there will be phases where your hormones are all down because you're going through menopause. And that is when, again, you cannot control yourself. You have headache, you have migraine, and everything else that comes with it. So I'm not going to deal with uh, menopause now. We're going to focus now on menses. So there are two things that cause this problem. Two things. One is, a topic that I like to talk again and again and again and again. You will see in my topics that I talk about endometriosis, I talk about period pain. If you want to know more, please go to my YouTube channel. It's in the link below. And go to my YouTube channel and look up endometriosis, look up 
uh, period pain. Why? Because endometriosis is a inflammatory disorder and endometriosis is again triggered during menses and endometriosis because it's an inflammation it's just like when you get an infection when you get infection you feel sick you have fever you feel body pain you get headache you fall you feel sick and that can be part and parcel of the entire endometriosis syndrome we call it endometriosis syndrome because endometriosis can cause so many problems it can cause period pain it can cause diarrhea during menses it can cause constipation during menses it can cause urine pain during menses it can cause backache during menses it can cause breathing pain during menses it can cause gastric pain during menses so what's stopping it from causing you headache during menses or migraine during menses it can cause leg pain during menses it can just cause any pain during menses so it can also cause headaches and migraines so that would be the first thing I want to think about and when I have people with headaches all their life during menses so the next thing I want to look for is do you have endometriosis if you also have endometriosis or adenomyosis then very likely your headache is also due to your endometriosis and adenomyosis so first cause Second cause is one cause that is very much related to those women who are going to menopause also. Why women who menopause only that 10-20% have headache, migraine, cannot sleep, emotional, same. Why? Because you have an underlying stress mentally or emotionally. If let's say a woman is having a lot of stress, when the hormones are nice and high, we say hormones, they are high and nice, they make you happy. Then you are happier. Your mood is better. You are more chill. You are able to control yourself. But when your hormones are down, that is when you cannot control yourself. That is when you succumb to your stress. When you succumb to your stress, that is when you get headaches, you get migraines, you get all kind of other things, your emotion up and down, losing your temper. That's why if you look for signs and symptoms of stress, headache and migraine is a sign and symptom of stress. But let's say if the stress is very extreme, then you will be having your headache and migraine every day, you don't need your menses. But maybe it's not so extreme. So when you are chill, you can cope. You can tell yourself, hey, chill, this is no big deal, just chill. But when your hormones are down, you lose control. And that is why you get your whole headaches and migraine during menses. I still remember this one lady that I had. She had very, very, very extreme um, headache and migraine every month during menses she cannot work she not just headache and migraine up to the extent she cannot get out of the bed she also become very unbearable you can't bear with her. her her emotions her anger a lot of things happen to her she's like a different person over that two three days very extreme and when she came to me she told me she cannot get pregnant so that's all she told me and as a result, I also did a scope for her and I saw endometriosis, but not too much. But after we clear the endometriosis, the headaches and migraines are still there. You know, when we do endometriosis surgery, sometimes we stop the menses for six months. And she told me the six months is the happiest time of her life because she don't have all these headache, migraines and mood changes during her menses because there's no menses but after six months when we allow the menses to come back that is when she cannot control herself again so even though we got rid of the endometriosis she still could not control herself and she still have all these headache and migraines so I told her please see my counselors my team of counselors and therapists so I made them see made her see them and that's it all her problems settled after that she saw my counsellor 
and no more does she have this headache and migraine after that. And when she saw the, my counsellor, her story was very, very interesting, but I will not share totally here. But it is a, a, a stress that she's having and that caused her to have this headache and migraine and all these premenstrual disorders during every menses that she dreaded so much. But we solve her problem just by seeing a counsellor. So very often, headaches and migraines are due to stress. And I also see them a lot in pregnant women. When they're pregnant, then they start to have headache and migraine and giddiness. And usually, because they never had it before, they have it only when they're pregnant. It's very easy. I always tell them, go and see the count my counsellor. One time enough, settle. And true enough, all of them go and see one time, settle. Why one time straight away settle? Because the fact that you have it during pregnancy, ha, got to do with something about pregnancy. Women, when they're pregnant, they are also very easy to be affected by all this stress because all these hormones are again down. So they go and see a um, counsellor. One time enough because their stress is not a long-standing stress. It's just something related to pregnancy. Something related. You know, women, when you get pregnant, you start to think a lot. Think about your job, think about your promotion. Think about who's going to take care of your baby. Think about money. Think about everything. Think about your life. You know, something is like going to affect your day-to-day -day life. So all these things, sometimes it's a stress for you as well. So you just go, need to go and see the counsellor one time, everything settled because the problem is not so bad. But for women who have headaches and migraine during every menses, probably one time will not solve. That lady I told you also saw about five times before her, her migraine totally go away forever. But for some of you who have headache and migraine every day, of course you also need about four to five sessions. It's not going to be so simple. Okay? So now you know what it is all about. So you have two ways of solving the problem. One is we say like fever, take Panadol. So when you have headache, you take the medicine either to relax the muscle or to relax the blood vessel. So medication to solve your headache. But every month your headache will still come, your migraine will still come. But you know what medicine to take, that's all. Or another way, find out the cause of the problem. Find out to see if it's uh, endometriosis. If it's endometriosis, of course the problem will solve you will find a treatment for endometriosis, your headache and migraine will solve. If not, then it could be due to your stress, then you need to see the therapist or counsellor to solve your headache and migraine, to really solve your headache and migraine. It is very interesting when the counsellors do sessions. They talk to you, they talk to you, they dig, they, 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 they dig your life in a way, and there will be a point when you start talking about something, and then your headache come back, your migraine come back, we found the source. You talk about it, you get your headache. That is the source of your problem. So once you start identify your source, then only you can try and solve it. Like uh, today I met one lady. So I told her now we know the source of your problem because she has menstrual disturbances for the last few months. And the source of her problem is her work. She's working very hard day and night. So her period became irregular. So I told her, we cannot, you cannot live with irregular period for the rest of your life. Of course, I can give you pills to solve your period irregular and then as long as you take the pill, your period is regular. But your body may not regulate back after you stop the medicine because your stress is still there. So you need to reduce your stress until your period is regular back. So sometimes we don't know. You may be happy working 16 hours a day and your menses is irregular, you are happy. Because as I always sometimes like to say, a lot of strong women in this world, you know, the world can collapse on them and they are still strong. So you can work 16 hours a day and you still feel good about it. But the fact that your menses is not regular, your body cannot take it anymore. So you have to reduce lo, from 16 hours to 12 hours and see what happened to your menses. Still irregular, drop to 8 hours and see what happened. No, this is something what I told her to do. So going, we want to find the source of your headache and migraine. And then only we can uh, um, 
try to help you to adjust your stress until your headache and migraine go away. So as I say headache and migraine, sometimes the stress may not be so bad as those people who have headache and migraine every day because you have it only when your hormones are down. When your hormones are okay, you're okay. So that's why sometimes uh, finding the cause of your stress will help. Um, so of course another way is to put you on oral contraceptive pill. Because putting you on oral contraceptive pill actually stabilizes your hormone as well. That is why sometimes when they start taking oral contraceptive pill, their headaches will go away. But not migraine. In fact, when you have migraine, we cannot give you oral contraceptive pill. So that one doesn't help. But it helps for headache. It helps for endometriosis. So that is why some people, once they take oral contraceptive pill, they actually find the headache go away. But some people find that the headache worsens. So the headache worsen could be due to it's a blood vessel problem or it could be due to, uh, and uh, no, mainly it's a blood vessel problem. But why the blood vessel give you the headache still you have to go back to whether it's stress related or endometriosis related. So these are the things we need to investigate. So this is the reason why you are suffering every month. And there is actually a solution to it. But question is, are you willing to find a way to solve your problem? Because sometimes endometriosis, we cannot see on ultrasound scan. Although now the latest, uh, strat the latest idea trial has come up with a way to scan for endometriosis, but it doesn't pick up 100% still. It, it only picks up advanced endometriosis. Because we have advanced endometriosis that still cannot see in normal ultrasound, then we can use this special idea, idea trial scan to do it. But it is still not something in those people who have mild endometriosis. So to detect endometriosis, we may need to look at all the other associated symptoms that you may be having or uh, give you a trial of a uh, medication that treats endometriosis to see if your headache go away, which I had, I think a couple of weeks back, I had this one lady who have headaches every time during menses. So I gave her three months of Visan to treat endometriosis. And then after that three months, her, her headaches actually went away. So that is another way. And if still cannot, then I may need to do a laparoscopy to see whether you have endometriosis. So that is again, something invasive and not many people are willing to do it. Or do something not so invasive to see my therapist. But again, seeing therapist is like a taboo in Malaysia. It's so hard to get people to see therapists. I think every five patients whom I ask to go and see therapists, only one will actually end up seeing the therapist. The other four will still avoid. So it's sad to say, but that is the way to cure you, unfortunately. But honestly, I don't see what's the harm seeing therapists because there's no pain. There's no, no, it's not invasive at all. I'm not going to poke you. I'm not going to do a surgery on you. And there's no side effects. There's no medication. All she's going to do to you is she's going to talk to you. But there are professionals who talk to people, who know how to talk to people to extract info out to help you solve your problem. So that is how you solve your problem. So if you want to solve your problem, I know many of you today actually have headache and migraine during menses. If you want to solve the problem, you will probably have to see either one of them. Do either one of these things. I think a couple of months back during MCO, I also had one lady uh, who did an online consult consultation because, because during the first uh, few uh, months of our MCO, the total lockdown, many people do not actually go out even though they can come to clinic but they try not to come. So we do a lot of online consultation and I still remember she has uh, multiple um, surgeries for endometriosis and she still lives with a lot of headache and migraine during menses and as well as period pain and she's already like in her mid-40s she feel like she don't want to do another surgery because another few more years you're going to menopause uh, endometriosis would settle by itself and then what she did was online uh, counseling with my therapist and it worked for her as well. She loved it so much because after two to three sessions, all her headache and migraine already reduced tremendously. 
and eventually it cured her. So she didn't need another surgery and also we got her out of painkiller. I think the main aim of doing this type of thing, sometimes we may not cure your endometriosis, but seeing a therapist can bring you off painkiller. And I think that is very important. Don't take painkiller forever because all of us know that is not a solution. And uh, that is also comes with certain side effects. So by seeing therapists can bring you out of reliance on painkiller. Her endometriosis is still there. She's not going to do a surgery. She wants to uh, try to get through until after menopause. Well, what if she cannot stand is her pain. So by seeing the therapist solve all her pain problem, okay? So if you've seen through my videos, if you've seen through so many of my videos, I have like 20, 30 live videos now. If you want to go through them, uh, go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Tan City Clinic. You just click to the link in this post. Go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at all the videos that I've seen, I've shown you. I'm showing you many, many examples of how seeing a counselor or therapist actually solve your problem. So, but the problem is, are you willing to see? And honestly, I really advise, be more modern lah. Don't be like, you know, typical Asian where we look at this as a taboo. I still remember Obama. Obama's wife actually mentioned that she actually saw a therapist to save her marriage. Many of us in Asia, when we quarrel, quarrel, we just divorce. Do we actually go and see a therapist to solve our marriage? We refuse. Why? These therapists do miracles, okay? They can solve almost all problems. So go and see them. So the thing is, many of you not willing. So let's not talk about marriage. But in the West, it's like that. They are very open to see the therapist, to see the counsellor. But unfortunately, in Malaysia, we are still very um, Asian. We are still, still very taboo. But see, because I have seen therapists many times and I know it has changed me a lot. So I am more, uh, what do you call it? I don't lose my temper easily nowadays, I sleep better. I basically um, solve a lot of my problem and I really advise all of you, if possible, go and see one. If you are having a headache or giddiness or migraine every time during your menses, go and see one because they can solve your problem, okay? They really can. So any of you have any question you want to ask, please post up in the comment section. I've seen some questions popping up just now. And as usual, if you have any more questions you want me to talk about, please put it in my comment section so that I have more ideas of the what you want. Because I have already talked about a lot of things that I think is very important. Um, basically also running out of topics, but I believe that what I think is important and what you think is important is not necessarily the same. So what you want me to talk, please put it up in the comment section. So I will have more topics to uh, put up forward in my future session. So today's topic is also uh, requested by one of you and thank you very much for your request. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the questions that you have posted up. Amy, um, as you mentioned, you're on Yasmin, and is it having a menses migraine every month normal? You see, when we talk about the hormones up and down, Yasmin actually is supposed to stabilize your hormones. But unfortunately, it is still causing you trouble. Partly also, Yasmin is a 21-day cycle, so a 21-day tablet rather than a 24. If you were going to take Yasmin every day, does it go away? So if it goes away, don't stop your Yasmin, just continue, that is another way. Because when you stop your Yasmin, your hormones again drop down, that can also cause your migraines to come for certain people. Of course, another possibility is maybe your migraine is not a migraine because uh, uh, as I said, oral contraceptive pill can cause migraine to worsen or as I said, it's not a migraine. It's, uh, it's not or your, or your migraine may not be due to your hormones. It can also be that way. So that is why, um, yeah, maybe you should go and see your, a therapist, okay, Amy? Grace Chong say, my migraine is also a week before ovulation and a week 
or few days before menses. So what I will do with you, Grace, I will still put you on oral contraceptive pill first because oral contraceptive pill will stop your ovulation and see whether all these things come or not. And then oral contraceptive pill also controls the endometriosis because endometriosis also like to give this type of pain, you know, before ovulation, before menses, during menses, they like to have this cyclical pain. So if you take oral contraceptive and then after that, your pain uh, go away, then I was first think that it could be due to, uh, it still could be due to hormones or endometriosis. But let's say if you take oral contraceptive pill and your migraine still come, then I'm really thinking more on psychological aspect, which is stress aspect of uh, ovulation uh, of your headache, yeah. Nuro Afifa, I'm endo stage four patient. Every month will get headache, one back ache, pelvic ache, leg ache, nausea. So Nuro Afifa, I hope I managed to help you as well as I managed to. I quote one example just now about a lady in her forties who had previous surgery for endometriosis, who is trying to av avoid a, 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 a surgery again. So this time. She went and see my therapist and all her problems stopped. She managed to get out of painkiller. All her pain reduced to very minimal. Her endo is still there, but her pain is gone. So I would advise you, Nuro, if you won't be going for a surgery, then it's better you go for uh, counseling or therapist. Anis Ayuni, if you are seeing therapist, um, you see the examples I quote earlier, they actually saw many sessions before it can go off. But I believe that the therapy should be able to reduce. But if it's not done totally, you should discuss with your therapist to ask whether your problem is fully settled. You see, sometimes a lot of you may not fully see the therapist fully in the sense that complete all sessions or you actually try to avoid like today I have a, a couple who come and see me for fertility and I tested everything is normal even IVF she has done twice she's not pregnant I did a scope for her there's no problem everything is fine and when I say have you seen the therapist yeah I've seen the therapist but when I trace her file she only seen the therapist twice and that is not enough and when i saw her file as well the therapists have planned some more she has a lot of things that are still not settled so i told her she's not settled said, I, I thought i'm settled no you know you are not settled okay a lot of you are trying to avoid seeing therapists i know sometimes it's not easy to tell somebody everything about your life but sometimes that may be the only way to actually help you so please see the therapist and please make sure you finish seeing the therapist up to the extent that therapists don't want to see you already because she has nothing to do for you anymore but if she always say no next session we'll work on this next session we'll work on this means you have some more things to do and please come okay anis why i ask you to see is because some of your symptoms like uh breathing discomfort things like that is still very much probably related to stress more than endometriosis wing yen tea her period is regular when there's no mco and on mco they will not be on time obviously it's stress related okay and honestly during this whole mco all kinds of abnormal period yeah, MCO disturbs our period because it causes us stress. Honestly, I also feel stress during MC. Uh, this it's not just MCO the whole nine months. A uh, whole how many months is it now? Seven months, eight months. But for me, it's different. I miss my, I miss my holidays. You know, I miss my overseas holidays. Even going to Bangkok or Singapore will make me happy. You know, it was before this Sabah election. I was like hoping that. Singapore will open up a bit more because Singapore they have a nice plan of four stages and I really hope that they will reach stage four they only reached the second stage they were about to open the third stage and fourth stage which I was actually hoping because to me I think if I get to go Singapore and just breathe a different air although it's the same air I know but it's not the same air as KL I guess um, and do some shopping in Singapore I will already be very happy but unfortunately, I still cannot get out of Malaysia, sad. And now, with after the Sabah election, I think Singapore will not open back for us. No hope, I guess. So I'm also very stressed sometimes. 
Jessica asks, uh, Dr. Tan, I don't have headache but migraine just before menses. I'm a homemaker and don't really have stress at home. How could I stop the migraine? Jessica, this is what I always hear and you are wrong. Just because you are a homemaker doesn't make you no stress. You know, whenever I talk about stress, people will just say, I got no stress. I either they say my job is happy, I'm happy with my job, I have no stress. Or they may even say I'm not working, I'm just stay at home the whole day, I got no stress. Why must stress be related to job? Why must stress be related to job? Okay. Why is because I told you I've seen a lot of therapists, right? I've seen I wouldn't say a lot, but many times, definitely more than five rounds already. Five to ten sessions I had. And um, I have um, um, one problem that I want I worked on was my migraine. I told you I used to have migraine for almost my entire secondary school life for for a long time. Not just secondary. I started having migraine when I was I think somewhere in uh, standard three, standard four when I was like only nine to ten years old, all the way until I was like. Uh, in my secondary school like 18, 19 and I don't know why I have this migraine and my migraine is not related to my uh, menses it just come whenever it feels like coming and it kills me and I just I will knock my head to the wall I still remember I knock my head to the wall and so it is actually quite horrible then when I was doing one of my therapy session over some other issues not related to my migraine but during when i was talking about certain issues i have this migraine came back to me you know i like never had migraine for 20 over years but during the therapy my migraine came back and i mentioned to you just now in therapy if your migraine come back when you're talking about that issue that is your stress and guess what was my stress that caused my migraine from for 10 years of my life my stress was my brother was my brother because ever since my brother came into my life my father loved me less because being an old Chinese man always loves son more and my mom always feel that he is smarter than me so I have these words coming into me every day in my life as a child. Your brother is smarter than you. Your brother is smarter than you. Your brother is smarter than you. And that was my stress for 10 years. So Jessica, you may not think you have stress at home, but you have stress if you have migraine. So I'm not saying you have stress if you have migraine. You may have endometriosis, I don't know. So it's either endometriosis or stress but don't always think just because you have nothing else that's happening to you in life that you are not stressful sometimes some things are still there lingering inside you back in the back part of your head that you don't think about it every day because you're so used to whatever life is going on but does not mean you have no stress go to the counselor and you will see what's going to happen but or else look for endometriosis. I'm not sure which one you want to sort out first, okay? Because not all endometriosis can see on ultrasound. So just sometimes I worry the ultrasound will be normal. And are you willing to just go and do a scope to look for the cause of your migraine or better see a therapist first, which is less invasive? You mentioned during or before menses, my migraine comes towards the end of it or post menses and it isn't every month so your one is a bit inconsistent so not home not so much hormonal related but the cause of your migraine could still be the same okay so um, in the beginning of my talk i did mention pre menses menses and some people post menses so it can also be but whatever it is if it's post menses and it doesn't happen every month i would still think of some form of stress, psychological issues rather than physical. Okay, Rosanna. Belinda asks where to find a therapist. I have in my clinic. So if you want to see my therapist, you just need to call up my clinic and make an appointment to see them. People ask me why see my therapist and not other people's therapists. Partly it's because other people's therapists 
some therapies deal different things. You know, every therapist in this world, they deal with different things. Some are dealing with a lot of very heavy stuff like drug addiction. Some are dealing with a lot of heavy stuff because they get a lot of uh, referral from psychiatrists. So they are dealing with anxiety disorder, depression, you know, real solid psychiatric problem. But my therapists deal with women problem. They don't deal with very, very heavy stuff. So, but they become expert in our day-to-day -day stuff. So there was this one lady who, who has very bad endometriosis and very bad period pain and also done surgery already. When I asked her to see my therapist, she didn't want and she went to some other therapist because partly it's because she's teaching in a certain college and that therapist in that place happened to be a panel. But when she went and see um, uh, that therapist, the that therapist said, oh, you fine, you don't have much problem, just a little bit, just go and do yoga and do some exercise. I know yoga and exercise reduces stress, but how much of yoga and exercise can you do? And then at the end, her problem is still not settled, you see. And why the therapist asked her to do that is because the therapist do heavy stuff. You are like, huh, period pain, ah? you come and see me, ah? I'm going to see someone else, lah. you know, something like that. So that's why my therapist deal with gynae problem gynae problem only they don't deal with children problem they don't deal with other problems they deal mainly with gynae problem so a lot of very day-to-day -day problem and they are willing to solve it. Vivian asked what are the charges for consultation per visit to the therapist in my clinic uh, our counseling service is a side service so it's not a main service so we charge half the price of what other people is charging uh, I always say it is a bankrupt business but it doesn't matter because to me when I treat one lady I want to treat her as a whole I know if I even if I'm the best surgeon I do the best surgery for you but if I don't solve your stress your problem is going to come back it's going to give me headache again I don't want the headache I want to really treat all of you really well I want to treat you as a complete person. That means I don't want to just treat you physically, but I want to treat you mentally as well, emotionally as well. So I make sure you are healed in all manners. And that is why when I do that, that is when most of my patients actually get to get total cure. So we all know, all doctors in this world know that stress can cause a lot of physical illness but not many of them actually have a therapist or counseling services within their clinic and many of them will just refer you out or some of them may not even refer you out because sometimes they refer you don't go you know it's like hey, i ask you to go so you won't go lah uh, it's okay after some time they just give up but honestly we all know and when we first became specialist, I still remember, whenever we go for exams, we have to say, you know, this problem, this problem, this problem, how to treat, how to treat, and the final answer, you know, we must put in, if we want to score perfect mark, we must send this patient to the psychologist for psychotherapy or something called cognitive behavior therapy, some form of therapy we must mention, okay? So we have to mention, that we need to ask the patient to go but that is for exam to score 100 marks but in reality not many doctors are doing it sad but this is Malaysia partly it's because a lot of patients are not open you know sometimes when I say you need to go and see a therapist you know what is my response from my patient she just laugh or else the husband is laughing or she is laughing they thought I'm not serious you know so so sometimes if we get patients laughing at us what we say right People think we are crazy, so some doctors will stop saying and already law, even though they know that's the right thing to do, even they know they know in their exam they have to write that to get 100 marks, but they stop saying it already because you don't believe in us. So sometimes have that. So that is why I have this service in my clinic. So when I see a patient for a physical problem, I make sure she is also well taken care of emotionally and psychologically so that whatever treatment I'm going to give her will be more effective by making sure that she is emotionally and psychologically healthy. Happy patient always get well faster one. Okay, Maria, 
us, Dr. Tan, I'm on Mirina due to endometriosis and as inserted three months ago. Sometimes I experience migraine, especially two days before my menses. Is it because of Mirina? Okay, Maria, no. Okay, we know that hormones cause headache and migraines, but it is not supposed to cause headache and migraine if you have no stress. Yeah, that is the most important thing. The most important message I hope all of you will get today is that you have headache or migraine because of your hormones, but it will not happen if you have no stress. That is the main thing I hope all of you get it. You're most welcome, Rosanna. Chao Suk Fung asks, CA125 can confirm reoccurrence of endometriosis not all endometriosis got high CA125. If you have high CA125 before your treatment, if the CA125 come back, then it's and your endometriosis come back. But some women got no, uh, the CA125 is normal even though they have endometriosis. So it depends on whether you have high CA125 ago uh, before or not. Hi, Dr. Tan. I have migraine pre, during and post menses not emotional, purely hormonal. You see, my message again, no? Hormonal also must have stress. So please see the therapist. Unless you have seen a therapist and the therapist have said that you have no stress at all, then only I'll believe you, you know? Because I have seen therapists before. Uh, there was this one time I still remember, because I have told you I've seen a lot of therapists. I, I thought all my problems are settled already. Then after that one day, I have this uh, very bad pain over my cheek, just my cheek. And I have it every day um, in the middle of my job. I wake up in the morning, I'm fine. Then I go to work and halfway I start having this cheek pain and I don't feel like talking to my patients. And I just have this every day, every day. And then when I go on a holiday, it goes away. And then I come back to work. The first week I'm fine, second week it hurts me again. So it is again very stress related, you know, a lot of people tell me it's stress related. And at the time also, I was like thinking, stress ah, you know, and this cheek pain was so bad, you know, that I actually went and checked so many doctors. I scanned my whole head and my whole cheek and my whole brain, MRI and everything. I've done ultrasound, CT scan, MRI, I've done everything. Until one last doctor told me it's all muscle tenseness only because the muscle was very tender. And I, then, she, then I said, why my muscle want to tense? Eh? Then he said, stress. Though. I said, look at her. One kind, stress, stress. I got no stress already. I stopped obstetry. I sleep well every night. I'm not emotional anymore. I'm very fine already. She said, go and see a therapist. Oh, okay. So I went to see a therapist because I generally believe in therapists. And I found out the cause of my stress. This pain, pain for six months. Six months, I don't know why I pain. After I see my therapist, my pain is over already. And that is like one and a half years already, no more pain. I have this pain for six months. And what was the cause of my stress? Six months before my pain started, I actually had one patient who was admitted to ICU and that was the cause of my stress. So when I went to the therapist and found out the cause of my stress, I switched back my WhatsApp, you know, because it's six months only, you know, you can look back at your WhatsApp when I first had, it, had the pain, the exact date, because when it happened, I consulted a friend, and then I looked back at the dates, what happened during that time, when did this patient admit to ICU, and it, it all tallies the dates. So sometimes, some cases, you know, it's things like this, that, that's why make me really truly believe in therapy. So I also thought I have no more stress, because I've seen therapy so many times. Most of my stresses around my life already settled, and I'm no longer emotional. Okay, so I went to the therapist, I found the source of my pain, my pain was settled, then then pain for six months every day of my life. If you have pain, please see therapist. Because if you just Google sign and symptom of pain, migraine and headache will always be there. Sorry, sign and symptom of stress, migraine and headaches is always there. Hormones just make you more succumb to your stress. Your stress is still there. Surely ask whether you can do it online. We don't do under WhatsApp for what we do under Skype. Yes, you contact my staff. They do do under Skype. You don't have to be face to face because we have clients everywhere. You know, we have Malaysians everywhere. I have followers, yeah, everywhere. I mean, most of my followers are Malaysians, some are not. 
but majority are Malaysians and I have them from everywhere so we have been doing Skype all the way from Europe and Australia and everywhere so no problem okay all right so because sometimes uh, Malaysians seem like um, sometimes for us when we see a foreigner we find it very hard foreigners tend to find it very difficult to stick on to our therapy because they always feel we cannot understand them so same thing I guess a lot of Malaysians who are overseas also find it very hard talking to a therapist that is overseas because they always feel they don't understand so that's why they rather um, have it on Skype with a Malaysian therapist because at least we understand Malaysians okay yes so even though sometimes we even though Malaysia you know we have all forms of religion and race but therapists being therapists they understand everything they accommodate because they understand that uh, these are beliefs of uh, Muslims these are beliefs of Christian these are beliefs uh, so when they talk to you they also accommodate and they adjust and they blend in as well so but then sometimes if you talk to some a therapist from uh, Australia or where else who, whom got maybe have little idea of the Muslim religion so sometimes they find it very difficult to talk but of course most of the time I still try our very best to uh, get someone to, uh, but most of them they understand they can do as long as you're Malaysian but we also have clients that are not Malaysian so we also have problems as well so for all of you who want to see my old topics uh, previous topics just go to the link go to my YouTube channel we have so many topics there and please subscribe to my YouTube channel okay and also click the notification button just in case you miss my live video and bye bye